the bell. Reading through the comments underneath the GCN Tech Show, there is often discussion, sometimes heated, on exactly what classifies as a super nice in the bike vault. Now, some of you may be asking, what is the bike vault? What's the bike vault? Where have you been? Under a rock? It's the part of the GCN Tech Show where viewers submit pictures of their bikes and myself and John judge them to either be nice or super nice. Yeah, that's right. And today, we're gonna run through our top secrets, but they're not gonna be secret anymore, but bits of advice, snippets, and tips so that you can firstly get into the bike vault and secondly, get that all important bell ringing. Now the bike, of course, it has to be the focus point of the photo that you take. Ah, but of course, not always. However, it is your pride and joy after all. This is my bike. There are many like it, but this one is mine. My bike is my best friend. It is my life. Ollie, stop, stop. Actually, no, stay like that for a minute. Work out those guns. But what Ollie's saying is actually quite true. After all, your bike needs to be in tip-top condition. So if you're going to submit a photo, make sure that it is absolutely spotless. We don't want any grime on it whatsoever. Don't do a five-minute bike wash. You want to make sure that bike is so good, you could even do your hair in it. So it needs to be show and shine style condition. Unless, of course, it's got a matte paint finish. Then we want it to be nice and flat. Can I go? I don't even yeah, know. you can put it down there. <sighs> you. Bike specifics then. If your bike looks like it's been covered in super glue and then dragged through a bike jumble sale and somehow got every single bike accessory available to humanity festooned upon it, then it probably isn't going to get super nice. Minimalism is key here. Even if you found a really beautiful spot mid-ride, we recommend temporarily removing some of your accessories as these can detract from the beauty and simplicity of your frame. They can draw the eye and they just don't look as good. So things to include are saddlebags, lights and bottles. Although, bear in mind, bikes with GCN water bottles, that's, that's the exception, they, they often get automatic super nices, especially if they're the, the red ones. But yeah, anything else, frame bags, whatever, pumps, temporarily remove it for the photo. Now we are joking, but I'm sure you'll agree that this bike now looks absolutely fantastic now that it's uncluttered. But something to consider here is also the angle in which you shoot your bike from. It needs to be side on, doesn't it, Ollie? That way we can really scrutinize all of the componentry as well as positioning of key items, such as your crank set, that needs to be in the three o'clock position. <laughs> as well as your valves, they need to be in the what o'clock position, Ollie? Six. Six o'clock, that's right. And if you're using clincher tyres, you need to make sure that the manufacturer's logo or even the actual model of those tyres need to match up perfectly with those valve stems. Of course, there are exceptions. If you're using tubular tyres, sometimes the manufacturer doesn't stamp their logo on in exactly the right place, but you are excused for that, well, error on their part, if you like. Also, Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls. We've got yeah, Biggie yeah, Smalls. We've got Biggie Smalls is in the house. Biggie Smalls again. I was waiting for you to bring him up. No, no, no. Not Christopher George Latore Wallace and his seminal album Ready to Die. Biggie Smalls as in the ideal gear to be in to make your bike photogenic. Yep. The big chain ring at the front and the smallest sprocket at the back. It looks absolutely perfect, doesn't it, yeah, when you do that? Biggie Smalls. Yeah, I see where you've gone with that. Now, one of the reasons behind this is that it has the derailleur in a really fantastic position. If you're going to have Biggie Big, we don't know anyone Biggie Big, do we? He never had any good albums. No. Well, then the derailleur pulley and the arms, they're going to be extended so far forward, it's just not going to be visually appealing, is it? No. Neither is small, smalls. No. Droopy chains. No one ever got a super nice for a droopy chain. No. Sticking with the drivetrain then momentarily, nothing screams super nice as much as a little bit of bling. And when I say bling, I mean a gold chain. Good chain though. Yeah, he's got a gold chain on there. Now, unfortunately here, Ollie has let me down, but we are going to do a little it's fist on order. Bump. It's on order. Good. Because after all, a bit of gold chain that adds just that extra dimension to your bike, doesn't it? Oh, and it well, does. nobody laughed at Mr. T, aka BA Baracus, did they? Bit of a fool. Precisely. Right, let's move on then. 
handlebar tape and saddle. In an ideal world, that needs to match. Now, I do understand it's not always possible, but if you're going for a light-coloured handlebar tape, make sure that those photos you submit, the bar tape is not filthy, it's not grubby, there's no grubby handprints on it, there's only room for one grubby guy around here, and that's me, OK? So, moving on from that then, Ollie, what's up next? Well, sticking with the front of the bike, the steerer tube. Now, controversial. Slamming your stem is all well and good. It's likely to get you a super nice, but we don't want you to slam your stem if it means it's gonna make the bike uncomfortable to ride for you and you're not gonna to wanna to ride it as much or it'll give you back pains. The one thing we don't like is excess steerer tube above the stem. No, that's right. So you are allowed to have up to 15 millimetres protruding above that stem. Now, the reason for that can sometimes give you a better clamping force, can't it, from your yep, actual like stem? like I've left five mil for that reason. Exactly. Here. Ollie's done a very good job of that. And also, for the fact if you want to resell the bike afterwards, well, you have a little bit of room there for a prospective buyer to actually be able to raise their bars a little bit. However, as we have mentioned a few times, 15 millimetres is the absolute maximum permitted in the bike vault. Background now, and this is important, it can make or break your photo. Do you go and try and get lots of nice depth and feel to really make your bike pop? Or do you just go a bit more basic and a bit of a more flat background? Well, if you get depth of field wrong, it can make the picture look garbage. And you often need specialist photography equipment to be able to do it. But the main take home message is that you pick a background that enables your bike to pop and stand out and isn't too cluttered. If you've got an epic background or something really beautiful, then by all means, you can include it. Just make sure that if you do, do it in a way that we can see it so that we can identify it. And also ask yourself, is it worthy of being in the background? Yeah, that's right. I mean, actually, we've got a vast knowledge outside of cycling, haven't we? We can identify most, most motor vehicles. Yes. Speeds of up to 30 miles an hour from that legendary air-cooled V12 engine, 29 litre petrol engine, that. 29. 810 uh, brake horsepower and 1,950 newton metres of torque. Most aeroplanes? True. That appears to be a VA97 A7 Corsair 2 on the left there, a carrier capable subsonic light attack aircraft. Military vehicles too? Indeed. And the RAF Hunter F Mark 6S entered service in October 1956. Just be careful though that there's nothing rude or naughty in the background. We get many submissions to the bike vault which we can never show you because there's inadvertently offensive things in the background. This is often done by mistake. It might be a nude reflection of the person taking the photo or it might be a dog in the background relieving itself, or it may be some offensive graffiti. Yeah, that's right. And whilst we talk about graffiti, actually, there is some notable exceptions, isn't there? Or certainly of artwork. Uh, firstly, Banksy, because his work is, well, priceless, and he's fairly local to us here in the UK. And also, that artwork in Ronsa in Belgium, and also at the bottom of the Aude Aquamont, which was produced by Nesta. That is cycling-specific. Yes, cycling-specific road graffiti. Yes. That's good. Above all, though, it's important to remember that these very stringent rules can change daily on a bike-by-bike -bike basis, depending on how we feel. Yeah, really, this is just a light-hearted take at exactly what you could do to get inside of the bike vault, but you don't have to actually follow, do you? Because let's face it, we get so many submissions, and without you, there would be no bike vault, would there? No, you guys are the best viewers in the world, so keep them coming, because we love getting your submissions to the bike vault. And rules are made to be broken, John. That's right. They certainly are. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, then please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends to help them get their bikes in the bike vault. And to watch the latest episode of the GCN Tech Show, click down here. Give it a super nice.